These are either simultaneous or previous to Lucian Floyd's formations that he puts on canvas about figuration, about a body. And this body has two parts, this particular one, which I really like. This formation, which is almost abstract, set out in front of this formation, and then this head that has nothing to do with the character here. The other thing I pull out of my suitcase is Lascaux, the cave paintings. And the cave paintings were made up of history of scratching, bison running across, rouging the forms that came out. And when I saw Lascaux, it was an amazing experience. And they had all these reindeer in size and then painted and then toned with the formations of the wall. And they were running across, historically, over, what, two or three hundred years, these guys were making these things. By the way, and as a side, Picasso saw these things and said, what's the point of doing anything? It's all done right here. Anyway, they were running across, and they went down to the floor, but it was all full of dust by that. They came up the other side to the end of the cave, and they fell over backwards, all of these animals. I thought, my God, how extraordinary. But does, what does that have to do with this? There's a stacking here of lines, dusting, formations, roundness, setting up volumes, taking a kneaded eraser, and taking out. So there's a kind of history that stacks back and forth. And then that history coalesces into now. He may make a mark, he defines an edge with a very loose line, and then a very hard line. And then there's the dusting of the charcoal. Maybe he charcoaled the whole thing and then drew into that and cleaned it out. But this thing here is so intriguing. It's like this bone thing sticking out in front. And then this, and then these breasts, and then these two formations here. I love this drawing. I love this drawing. And then suddenly, these little lines here, are they radiations from the light coming out of the window? Or are they just markings? And the interesting thing is that the markings can become descriptive or illustrative, or they can just be markings in terms of the fact of the markings, which I love that too. So this is just in my mind, a masterful drawing. It has no history. It's forever. It is an old fashion, it is a new fashion, it's just there. Let's go down to this one here. This one here, where she has this funny little smile on her face, this little figure. Again, the charcoal setting up a field that was sometimes done and then cleaned out and drawn in and dusted, dusted with the falling of the charcoal, setting up volumes and then defining forms, these little lines in there, and then taking an eraser and cleaning them all out. He was better than any of those guys as far as I was concerned. This, these drawings are better than any of these other people that were contemporaneous to him, who will remain nameless. And then we jump over to this one here. Wow, look at this drawing here, that face on her. And now the spaces are much more open, the dusting, and then these funny little lines that go in there, and they're incised little lines, and then a little pubic thing, and then boop, boop, Pretty fine. 
Tony, do you, would you like to engage in this viewing of these things? Sure. Well, I'd like to try. <laughs> okay. It's kind of after, after uh, artists agree that you can't really talk about art, then we can't stop talking after that That's point. it. That's one of the ironies of it. We're blabbers. Yeah. The way the surfaces are articulated and fluttering and broke down reminds me a lot of the things that were happening with abstract expressionism. But I see a lot of that whole kind of windstorm of shapes moving around. But these look so abstract expressionist to me now that in fact they weren't so isolated to what was happening in the world at that moment because all the forms are being blown around. And particularly between uh, these drawings is this drawing that I think, uh, you know, was completely or hugely influenced by uh, de, de Kooning. The, the thing, I sh share Ed's response to them about being reminiscent of Lascaux, which we saw separately, but which made a big, uh, big impression on both of us. But uh, Lascaux struck me as being so much about French painting even though it was 16,000 years ago. It had all this kind of developed richness. Uh, you know, it wasn't like some kind of uh, art brute that just jumped out of some kind of primitive instinct. These people were obviously professionals who had evolved and had a, had a much previous history. And it's interesting when we go back, when we look at some of the other pieces in the show, they do have a uh, very archaic Greek slash uh, primitivist uh, kind of feeling, as well as as, the, as their French influence. What's interesting about this center one, Tony, is that I didn't notice there was a figure. There's a head at the top of that, yeah. and I was looking at that like a de Kooning drawing, with all the the breaking up the, of of the, uh, of the shapes, fracturing of shapes, and then suddenly I see this head up there with the shoulder coming out. And then I see a profile of a face, which of course really attracts me. But I think going over to some of these other things that you talk about, of being Greek or being simple things, a little bit like uh, Modigliani, and then shapes on the side that are sort of symbolic kinds of things with that one there, with the two breasts, forms, this. And then these guys here, and this one here. You know, he sort of explored and shifted from one period to another, like most of us do. You broke, broke it open, and breaking it open is, is the whole, the whole game. And Bill would break to this, these Greek formal things. It's like that big painting that's up in the room. It's just a great painting. What do we have back there? Let's go in there. I'm attracted to these drawings. It's like an old girlfriend. And as she's reintroduced, I start, start noticing things, qualities about her that I wasn't aware of at the time. And these the qualities in these things are sort of amazing. And they're very attractive to me. So it does something to my head, it goes mm -mm, like that. It slices, change, shifts my, I hate to use the word conscious, my awareness, let's see. My awareness, I'm suddenly aware of these things. Tony? There's all these transparencies. There's all these, um, kind of the scent of some exotic other place that comes into them. I mean, they're certainly, they can't help but be very much about LA. 
This one sure has a scent, doesn't it? Yeah. Of some other place. But, it, but some other place seen from L.A. It's funny because this particular piece has this fragment. I can't help seeing it where it's, a, it's like a total little fragment out of Matisse. Just, mm -hmm. just a little like that convention. But then the rest of it, of course, goes somewhere else. And that scrambling of line down below. Yeah. So he introduced a lot of different possibilities and imagery in that drawing. Right. Yeah. The, the kind of vulva shape on the left, and then the figure in the center, the rose thing, the section out of that section that's these little lines that describes the head and the neck. I'm very attracted to this piece because of the strange peekaboo. Head there. Yeah, and the head reminds me of cycladic art or something. And then the strange cactus uh, pussy kind of thing. Yeah. It has a nice drawing. Yeah, I'm very attracted to that one. Well, what was interesting that Tony and I were at his studio with many drawings that I'd never knew. I never knew that he did that. I knew he had this place out yonder and uh, he would disappear and from time to time we would get together for lunch or go and see an exhibit somewhere. And uh, that was the kind of a great thing to do because he was an early hero of mine. So here I am hanging out with an early hero and he's being very gracious like only Bill was. Most gracious person. And a most succinct person. But he didn't send you with the moon with these insights. He just let them out. I like out yonder, though. I'm going to use that title myself. It could be the. <laughs> it could be a title uh, for the show, in fact. And there's something really attractive to the idea of out yonder. In and Van Nuys, and that was out yonder for us. I had this first impression of him as the uh, the teacher, and. Uh, the person who got me into Dick Diebenkorn's painting class when Dick came as the visiting famous artist. In a way, Dick was like, shared with Bill not wanting to be on the scene. I mean, that's one thing about that they shared in common. And I think that uh, Bill also maybe had this sense that you give up a kind of freedom when, when you become part of the crowd. You know, you. you you don't take your place within the crowd, within the other group of artists, you're able to be really an independent. It's a shock to see the work and to have the, the separation come between preconceptions and the pleasure of looking at the work now. And it is a unique, beautiful, engaging voice.